1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, popularly known as Delta Force, is a U.S. Army component of Joint Special Operations Command. It was formally listed as the Combat Applications Group by the Department of Defense but some claim it has been redesignated the Army Compartmented Elements. While 1st SFODD is administratively supported by USASOC, it falls under the operational control of the Joint Special Operations Command. Delta Force and its Navy counterpart, the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, are the United States military's primary counterterrorism units. It is often referred to in the U.S. media as a special mission unit. Delta Force's primary tasks are counterterrorism, direct action, and national intervention operations, although it is an extremely versatile group capable of conducting many types of clandestine missions, including, but not limited to, hostage rescues and raids. The Central Intelligence Agency's highly secretive Special Activities Division and more specifically its elite Special Operations Group often works with our Euro, and recruits a Euro operators from Delta Force. History, Delta Force was formed after numerous, well-publicized terrorist incidents in the 1970s. These incidents led the U.S. government to develop a full-time counter-terrorism unit, Key military and government figures had already been briefed on a model for this type of unit in the early 1960s. Charlie Beckett, a Special Forces officer and Vietnam veteran, had served as an exchange officer with the British Army's Special Air Service during the Malayan Emergency. Upon his return, Beckett presented a detailed report highlighting the U.S. Army's vulnerability in not having an SAS type unit. U.S. Army Special Forces in that period focused on unconventional warfare, but Beckett recognized the need for not only teachers, but doers. He envisioned highly adaptable and completely autonomous small teams with a broad array of special skills for direct action and counter-terrorist missions. He briefed military and government figures, who were resistant to creating a new unit outside of Special Forces or changing existing methods. Finally, in the mid-70s, as the threat of terrorism grew, the Pentagon High Command appointed Beckett to form the unit. Beckett estimated that it would take 24 months to get his new unit mission ready. Beckett's estimate resulted from a conversation he had earlier with Brigadier John Watts while updating his SAS experience in England in 1976. Watts had made it clear to Beckett that it would take 18 months to build a squadron, but advised him to tell the Army leadership that it would take two years and not to let anyone talk out of this. To justify why it would take two years to build Delta, Beckett and his staff drafted what they dubbed the Robert Redford Paper. In it Delta outlined its necessities and historical precedents for a four-phase selection assessment process. In the meantime, Colonel Bob Blackglove's mantle of the 5th Special Forces Group was tasked with creating a unit to breach the short-term gap that existed until Delta was ready, dubbed Blue Light. On November 4, 1979, shortly after Delta had been created, 53 American diplomats and citizens were taken captive and held in the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, Iran. The unit was assigned to Operation Eagle Claw in order to enter the country covertly and recover the hostages from the embassy by force on the nights of 24 and 25 April in 1980. The operation was aborted due to aviation failures. The review commission that examined the failure found 23 problems with the operation, among them and briefed whether encountered by the aircraft, command and control problems between the multi-service component commanders, a collision between a helicopter and a ground refueling tanker aircraft, and mechanical problems that reduced the number of available helicopters from 8 to 5 before the mission contingent could leave the transloading refueling site. After the failed operation, the U.S. government realized more changes needed to be made. The 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, also known as the Night Stalkers, was created for special operations requiring aviation support. The Navy's Special Warfare Development Group, formerly designated SEAL Team 6, was created for maritime counterterrorism operations. The Joint Special Operations Command was created for command and control of the various counterterrorism units of the U.S. military. Organization and Structure The unit is under the organization of the U.S. Army Special Operations Command but is controlled by the Joint Special Operations Command. 
Command of 1st SFODD is a colonel's billet. Virtually all information about the unit is highly classified and details about specific missions or operations generally are not available publicly. A number of sources, including the book Inside Delta Force by Command Sergeant Major Eric L. Haney, suggest the unit's strength ranges from 800 to 1,000 personnel, including the following operational groups. Detachment designations, Delta Force's structure is similar to the British 22 Special Air Service, the unit that inspired Delta's formation. In Not a Good Day to Die, the untold story of Operation Anaconda, Army Times staff writer Sean Naylor describes Delta as having nearly 1,000 soldiers. Naylor wrote that approximately 250 of those are operators trained to conduct direct action and reconnaissance missions. There are three main operational squadrons, A Squadron, B Squadron, C Squadron. These squadrons are based on the organization of the SAS Sabre Squadron, and each contains 75 to 85 operators. Each Sabre Squadron is broken down into three troops are Euro 1 Recon Sniper Troop, and two direct action assault troops are Euro that can operate either in teams or in groups as small as four to six men. Recruitment most intake comes from the special forces groups, with a sizable but significantly smaller portion from the 75th Ranger Regiment, though a few have come from other units of the Army. Since the 1990s, the Army has posted recruitment notices for the 1st SFODD. The Army, however, has never released an official fact sheet for the elite force. The recruitment notices in Fort Bragg's newspaper, Paraglide, refer to Delta Force by name and label it. The U.S. Army's Special Operations Unit organized for the conduct of missions requiring rapid response with surgical application of a wide variety of unique special operations skills. The notice states that applicants must be male, in the ranks of E-4 through E-8, have at least two and a half years of service remaining in their enlistment, be 21 years or older and score high enough on the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery Test to attend a briefing to be considered for admission. On June 29, 2006 during a session of the Committee on Armed Services, General Wayne Downing testified before the U.S. House of Representatives that 70% of all Delta operators started their military careers in the 75th Ranger Regiment. Selection Process Haney's book Inside Delta Force described the selection course and its inception in detail. Haney wrote the selection course began with standard tests including push-ups, sit-ups, and a two-mile run, an inverted crawl and a 100-meter swim fully dressed. The candidates are then put through a series of land navigation courses to include an 18-mile, all-night land navigation course while carrying a 40-pound rucksack. The rucksack's weight and the distance of the courses are increased and the time standards to complete the task are shortened with every march. The physical testing ended with a 40-mile march with a 45-pound rucksack over rough terrain that had to be completed in an unknown amount of time. Haney wrote that only the senior officer and NCO in charge of selection are allowed to see the set time limits, but all assessment and selection tasks and conditions were set by Delta Training Carter. The mental portion of the testing began with numerous psychological exams. The men then went in front of a board of Delta instructors, unit psychologists, and the Delta commander, who each asked the candidate a barrage of questions and then dissect every response and mannerism of the candidate with the purpose to mentally exhaust the candidate. The unit commander then approaches the candidate and tells him if he has been selected. If an individual is selected for Delta, he undergoes an intense six-month operator training course to learn counterterrorism and counterintelligence techniques, in which the individual maintains little contact with friends and family for the duration. Training includes firearm accuracy and various other munitions training. In a recent interview, former Delta operator Paul Howe talked about the high attrition rate of his Delta selection course. He said that out of his two classes totaling 240 men, only 12 to 14 candidates completed the course. Training According to Eric Haney the unit's operator training course is approximately six months long. While the OTC course is constantly changing the skills taught broadly include the following, marksmanship, the trainees shoot without aiming at stationary targets at close range until they gain almost complete accuracy, then progress to moving targets. 
Once these shooting skills are perfected, trainees move to a shooting house and clear rooms of enemy targets, first one only, then two at a time, three, and finally four. When all can demonstrate sufficient skill, hostages are added to the enemies. Demolitions and breaching, trainees learn how to pick many different locks, including those on cars and safes. Advanced demolition, and bomb making using common materials. Combined skills. The FBI, FAA, and other agencies were used to advise the training of this portion of OTC. Commercial airliners such as Delta Airlines would allow Delta to train on their aircraft as well. The new Delta operators used demolition and marksmanship at the shoothouse and other training facilities to train for hostage and counter-terrorist operations with assault and sniper troops working together. They practiced terrorist or hostage situations in buildings, aircraft, and other settings. All trainees learn how to set sniper positions around a building containing hostages. They learn the proper ways to set up a TOC and communicate in an organized manner. Although Delta has specialized sniper troops, all members go through this training. The students then go back to the shoot house and the hostages are replaced with other students and Delta Force members. Lib ammunition is known to have been used in these exercises to test the students and build trust between one another. Tradecraft in a Euro During the first OTCs and creation of Delta, CIA personnel were used to teach this portion. Students learn different espionage-related skills, such as dead drops, brief encounters, pickups, load and unload signals, danger and safe signals, surveillance and counter-surveillance. Executive protection in a Euro During the first OTCs and creation of Delta, the U.S. State Department's Diplomatic Security Service and the United States Secret Service advise Delta. Students take an advanced driving course learning how to use a vehicle or many vehicles as defensive and offensive weapons. They then learn techniques for VIP and diplomatic protection developed by the Secret Service and DSS. Culmination Exercise A final test requires the students to apply and dynamically adapt all of the skills that they have learned. Commanding Officers, Command of 1st SFODD is a colonel's billet. Charles Alvin Beckwith in a Euro 1977-1981, William F. Garrison in a Euro 1985-1989, Peter J. Schumacher in a Euro 1989 1992 William G. Buikina a Euro 1992-1994, Bernard J. McAbee in a Euro 1994-1996, Eldon Barger well a Euro 1996-1998, Uniform, the Pentagon tightly controls information about Delta Force and refuses to comment publicly on the highly secretive unit and its activities. Delta operators are granted an enormous amount of flexibility and autonomy. To conceal their identities, they rarely wear a uniform and usually wear civilian clothing both on and off duty. When military uniforms are worn, they lack markings surnames, or branch names. Civilian hairstyles and facial hair are allowed to enable the members to blend in and avoid recognition as military personnel. The term operator, inside the United States Special Operations Community, an operator is a Delta Force member who has completed selection and has graduated OTC. Operator was first used by Delta Force to distinguish between operational and non-operational personnel assigned to the unit. Other special operations forces use specific names for their jobs. Operator is the specific term for Delta's operational personnel. However, since the early 2000s other special operations forces have adopted the term. SEALs may have unofficially referred to themselves as operators since the Vietnam War. Author and Navy SEAL Gene Wentz makes many references to fellow SEALs as operators in his 1992 book titled Men in Green Faces which is about the SEALs in Vietnam. Operations and Clandestine Operations The majority of the operations assigned to Delta are classified and may never be known to the public. However, details of some operations have become public knowledge. There have been many occasions that Delta have been put on standby and operational plans developed but the unit was stood down for various reasons. See also Joint Special Operations Command SEAL Team 6, 24th Special Tactics Squadron, Delta Force in Popular Culture, 
List of Delta Force members, List of Special Forces Units, References Further reading External links The official website of the United States Department of Defense The official website of the United States Army, Shadow Spear Special Operations, SFOD, SpecialOperations.com Delta Force Article Transcript of Sean Naylor's speech to American Enterprise Institute, 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta at Global Security.